Hey, Sainers. Welcome to the Saints TV YouTube channel. A um, <clears throat> bit of an impromptu one uh, after yesterday's crazy game. So first of all, as much as it pains me to say, congrats to Collingwood. Minor premiers, best team all year. Won the granny um, in grand style. Great game from Brisbane, though. That was a grand final that we wanted. We wanted a close one. It's been a few years of just lopsided ones. So good to see two pretty much the two best teams all season go at it, uh, two teams that we're chasing. Um, and watching that game, you just saw the quality that they both had um, with the ball, without the ball, um, individual quality, but then as a team, collective quality. And that's why the game was what it was. Bad luck for Brizzy. Um, good on Collingwood, much deserved. But I thought I'd do a video. I did one similar last year. Um comparing us to kind of the grand finalists, so Geelong in Sydney, but I thought I'd do another one very similar, just looking at um, us versus the Pies in terms of how we want to get to that level, not us versus the Pies as if we're the same level. This is very much looking at they're the team everyone's chasing and how do we get there? What are we lacking? What do they do that we don't do? What are they good at? You know, what makes them the 2023 premiers? And... Um, you can be really top line. So this one's just going to be a bit of a gloss over. Um, obviously, there's there's a lot of factors outside of just stats and what they do on the field, obviously how they prepare, the way they play, um, their coaches. Obviously, they've got some gun players and that's a key, you know, probably the first key thing that we want to address is that they've got game breakers. They've got players that can just stand up in the moment and just look at the Norm Smith medalist yesterday and Bobby Hill. Like, sensational game. Four goals won, set up pendles that put him in front at an important time. Uh, chased all day, tackled, and then, yeah, got the icing on top of the cake. Um, so much deserved from him. But probably not a player that we thought would win the Norm Smith. You know, we're looking at the Nick Dacos, the Jordan Dugowies, these sort of guys. Um, and he got the chocolates. So that's the depth that you need at AFL level. Players like that in a grand final make all the difference. And really in the end, a player like Bobby Hill and what he did made the difference. So the stars probably didn't shine as brightly as they usually do. Obviously, Nick Dacos said he's 29, but they're across the board, low possession getters, even Brisbane, Lockie Neal, these sort of guys, Brownlow medalist, didn't have the best day. Um, but they had players, you know, like Zach Bailey, Cam Rayner, Obviously, Charlie Cameron, McCluggage in the middle, um, Coleman, I think it was, um, just had an unreal game in the first half at like over 22 possessions. Um, but I thought we'd just, yeah, let's just take a bit of a look. I've got some pages here that I'll share. This is obviously just a bit of an open discussion, but this to me just kind of shows a little bit about um, where we need to go. So I found this interesting. I don't know if you can see this, guys, but... This is the sort of AFL rankings um, based on sort of where teams are at sort of in terms of attack and defense. We've all seen these charts, you know, that obviously you've got Melbourne there who overall is very, very good defensively, very strong attack lacking. You look at Collingwood and they're pretty much level on both. Good at defense, good at attack. That's what you need. Brisbane defense, pretty decent attack is a serious weapon and, that was the main reason why I tipped them yesterday is I really thought their attack was just that little bit better than Collingwood's, which you look at, but Collingwood's defense is just a little bit better than Brisbane. So that made for the game that we got. Um, in the end, Collingwood did take their chances. They kicked a lot of points. Um, Brisbane actually kicked pretty accurately for most of the day. That kind of gave us the game that we got yesterday. But look where we are, okay? So, for example, our... Overall is in the negatives. Our defense is better than Brisbane's and on par with basically Collingwood's. And our attack is just, that's where it's at. Like top line, that is the difference between us and the two teams in the granny. Obviously, there are more factors in terms of individual skill, but collectively, this year, defense, we nailed. We got it right. We were the number one defensive team by a fair way. I think Melbourne and Collingwood were two and three, uh, respectively. So you look at that and you go, great. We've got one part of this sorted. One part of this sorted. But there's more to it than that. 
there's more to it than that. Um, we need to get the attack right. So you go back to Collingwood, for example. So overall charts here, we're right on level. That's pretty much where you'd think we would be. We're not any worse. We're not much better. Uh, and then you've got the two grand finalists there and Melbourne who just coughed it up again two years in a row. But it's funny when you go to the overall season ranking. So this is kind of current ranking, obviously. Um, I don't know what the current ranking means, whether that takes into account finals. It probably does, uh, given GWS, Collingwood, Brizzy, Melbourne, um, and these teams were in there. But um, you go overall season rank and you sort it and you go two. I'm like, that's a bit interesting. But that shows where our defense was at. That's how good our defense was. Right, look at that. 8.9. Melbourne's was 10. Like that's with Lever, May, Petty, like gun backline, best backline in the comp. And then you've got Collingwood, Brisbane. But then you flip it over and you look at the attack. We drop. Big time. This, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly where the improvement needs to come. Bobby Hill. Is Liam Henry that type of player that we need? That X factor that can bob up and just take a game by the scruff of the neck, kick his three or four in a big game and surprise? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we're missing that. That pace, that excitement, um, that X factor. Maybe that's that's the key difference. Now, I flip it over and we'll go to Collingwood's key, key stats. So I think this will come up here. There we go. So you look at them. Points per game, fifth. Obviously, that is a key, key thing in the final series. You want to be top five, top six for points four if you're going for the flag. You can't be number one defense, 15th attack. You just can't. It's not going to work. But their pressure game is as good as anyone's. Goal assists, they share it around. That means that they've got a vast majority of goal kickers. Probably goes without saying the fact that they've, you know, they got Dan McStay who missed in the grand final, but they don't have many other targets. We've got one hand really with Max King, Tim Membry, um, but maybe spreading the load a little bit more is where it's at. That's definitely what they did. It worked. Yeah, Brisbane have got the key targets, but they've got a lot of goal kicking mids. Points per game for opponents ranked second. Again, you know, you have fifth there, second there. Look at the defensive stats. Top five for all of them. Rebounds aren't huge for them. I think they're pretty big for us. We'll look at our stats shortly to compare. That needs to change. And obviously, marks per game differential, that doesn't really matter. Defensively for them, they're great. And then they've got the attack sorted. So they're the perfect, perfectly balanced team at the moment. And that really just showed yesterday that no matter the way the game was going, they could shift it and go defense or they could shift it again and go quick down the middle. And I can't share this, but I'm just looking at the possession heat map for yesterday. Collingwood's was down the guts pretty much in the middle of the ground the entire game. Brisbane's was very, very much left side back pocket um, transition. So you can see Collingwood, no matter how the state of the game, this is why they win so many close games because they're willing to go for that kick down the middle of the ground. I think that's a big thing that we need to to learn to do is to take risks um, a bit more. I think we 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 started the year kind of like that, but we didn't finish the year like that. So you look here and you go, kicks, we were number one. We possessed the ball all season. Marks, disposals, handballs, kicks, then tackles. Ranked second in clangers per game. There is no point having so much of the ball that we're – you know, the second worst team when it comes to turning it over. So that is a key thing we need to change. Collingwood yesterday in a grand final under immense heat when at 76% by foot for the entire game. Their efficiency inside 50 was then 53%. That is insane. 30 shots on goal from 57 inside 50s. Um, Brisbane went at 51, which is still very, very good. Both teams, very efficient inside 50, but their disposal efficiency was much less. Ours, on average, is probably 70, on average, maybe even less. They went at 76 in a grand final against the best, second best team in the comp behind themselves. So that shows that they just know how to control the game. 
They know how to own the football. It's all well and good that we've got a bit of the football, but how much value do we really get out of possessing the football when we're turning it over as much as we do? And then if you've got the football, you want to be scoring goals. You know, if you've got the football more than your opponent, you do not want to be going into the game with 15th in points per game. And then the key thread here is a lot of attacking metrics we're down on, you know, hit outs per game. That's an attacking metric. You know, that sets you up in the middle of the ground. We know how poorly we've gone in the middle of the ground against these top teams. Look at the GWS final, for instance. We would have gotten battered against both midfields yesterday. You know, they they both had a lot of clearances. 38 to 44, 10 to 14, Brisbane's way. 28 to 30, stoppage clearances overall. Both midfields did a great job yesterday. They got enough of the ball for, for their team to win. That's why the game was so close. Inside 50s per game, 12th, we don't get it in there enough. 17th for goal assists per game. Collingwood, what, what were they? One or two. We're 17th. That is a huge gap. They share it around. They've got multiple goal kickers. They don't rely on a specific player. We clearly, even without Max King, in the end, relied on too little from you know the, the many players that are capable of kicking goals for us. Clearances, again, shocking, 18th. And then we just allow the opponent to do too much with the football. Collingwood did not allow the opponent to do any of this at all. Like you flip it again, go back to them, nothing. There's nothing there. And technically we are better defensively than Collingwood, technically, for points against. But when you turn it into defensive structure across the ground and what we allow the opponent to do, we probably allow the opponent to do too much and they allow them to do nothing. You know, so that always keeps them in the game. The game might be close. They might be losing, but they never get blown out of the water, Collingwood. They never are too far away that they can't turn the game around. And yesterday, their biggest lead was only 12 points. Their biggest lead was only 12 points for the game. Brisbane, their biggest lead was 13. That's a Collingwood game for you. If the game is like that, to me, I dare say it's on Collingwood's terms. You know, Brisbane want to put you to the sword and win by a lot. The game was ebbing and flowing the entire game. And the longer it went, you go, Collingwood are going to pinch this. This is what they do. And in the end, they did. So there's no surprises there. For me, I mean, this is just a very top line sort of video. But um, to kind of wrap it up there, I just think that obviously we need to improve midfield. They've got some guns in there. But it wasn't just that yesterday that really did it for Collingwood. It was the fact that they could shift between defense and attack so well. We are quite defensively minded. I think um, we only really push on the attack when we're down. I don't think we know how to go for it from the start. We started the year like that, but we didn't finish the year like that. So we need to really imprint that. And the other thing that goes without saying, or maybe it doesn't, is that Collingwood, no matter the way the game is going, will always stick to their plan. They will always play their way, their brand, and that's it. They live by their sword. They die by their sword. That have been, they've been doing that for two years. And it works more times than not. So why would you change it? For us, we need to come up with, well, we don't need to come up with, but we need to tweak what we've got. Obviously, defense is great and it works, but it really does. It, how much, you know, does that sacrifice us going forward? The fact that we're so, you know, I guess tight in defense. We're so strong there, but does that on the flip side really reduce our impact going forward. Collingwood are pretty much saying, bring it on. Let's have a shootout and we'll beat you to it. And they don't even have a key target like we do. So they've got to really operate in a different way to us going inside 50. And it's worked for them. Everyone says, get a forward. They need a forward. They want a flag without a key target. Mason Cox, their tallest player. That's it. So for us, I think we can take a lot of lot out of watching what Collingwood did yesterday, what they did all season. Um, Ross Lyon talked about Geelong being the benchmark all season this year, uh, the reigning premier, and we saw what we did when we played them. So no doubt Ross was very, very prepared playing them. But next year, it's a different ball game. It's not Geelong. It's Collingwood. It's Brisbane. It's two high-scoring teams that are able to keep, that are decent defensively. They are top five for attack, top five for defense, both of them, that's where it's at. We are number one for defense. We're 15 for attack. That's where the improvement needs to come. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, Sainers. I'm not going to go through this in too much detail. That's just my top line sort of thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed it. 
Uh, let me know what you learned watching Collingwood and Brisbane yesterday and where they really stood out and maybe just something that you noticed that they do that we've just not done or we should do more of um, or start thinking about for our own game plan. Um, obviously, individual players, that's factored in. They've got gun players all over the ground. Brisbane, so do Collingwood. We don't. We're still in a work in progress. But I'm, I want to know more in terms of game plan, in terms of attitude, just match day management, what they do. And that's kind of the things that I noticed. It's just their shift um, in tempo and the fact that they just stick to their game plan the whole game, no matter what, and it works. So... I'll leave it there. Thanks very much, Sainers. Um, there'll be more videos this week. No podcast tomorrow night. We'll be at the BNF, so there'll be a special Saints TV Live, Max and Jordan. Uh, we'll be doing a BF, uh, BNF sort of watch along, um, and we'll hopefully get some footage for the BNF for like a, a vlog or something um, during the week, so stay tuned for that. But anyway, Sainers, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Go Sainers.